How did Russia get from here to here? As the phenomenon known as Beatlemania played out around the world, in Russia, possessing Beatles records and even listening to them could mean jail time. The Beatles, more than anyone else, represented the face of a decadent West, the enemy of Soviet communism. And while the Beatles were making history during the 1960s, the USSR was undergoing some history-making changes of its own, and the Beatles provided the soundtrack. 1964. Hidden behind the Iron Curtain, changes were occurring. Nikita Khrushchev confidently boasted that Russia would bury the West and exceed the United States in quality of life by the year 1980. The brief Soviet thaw ended as Khrushchev was ousted and Leonid Brezhnev became the secretary of the Communist Party. The old guard was back. A revolution in American culture had also begun. The Beatles debuted on the Ed Sullivan Show to an astounding 73 million viewers playing I Want to Hold Your Hand. They would soon release a movie, have five hit songs on the Billboard charts, and win two Grammys. 1965. The war in Vietnam intensified, and thermonuclear war between the West and the USSR seemed more likely. Half the planet lay under communist control, and even outer space seemed to be controlled by Russia as they held the lead in the space race. The Beatles were also riding high, quickly becoming the leading edge of the cultural shockwave and playing to a record number of fans at New York Shea Stadium. 1965 saw the release of Yesterday, Eight Days a Week, Ticket to Ride, and Help. Try to see it my way. 1966, in Russia, widespread political and religious repression persisted. In the southern town of Stavropol, a 35-year-old up-and-comer rose to leadership of the Territorial Central Committee of the Communist Party. His name? Mikhail Gorbachev. No one knew it, but the Berlin Wall was now just 23 years from tumbling down. That year, John Lennon proclaimed the Beatles to be bigger than Jesus, stirring a wave of public outcry that did little to diminish sales of Beatles records, as Rubber Soul goes number one and Paperback Writer, We Can Work It Out, and Yellow Submarine all top the singles charts. In August 1966, the Fab Four performed their final U.S. concert in San Francisco's Candlestick Park. 1967, the KGB reported that the governments and intelligence services of the USA and other imperialist states had intensified their aggressive policies and subversive activities. The USSR turned 50, celebrating on Red Square, and no one trusted anyone over 30. The energized Russian youth, inspired by the rock culture, began to form what they called Beatles bands. Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band is released in 67, subverting the world of music. Hundreds of versions of Yesterday are recorded. It was also the year of Penny Lane and Strawberry Fields Forever, and the Beatles went on to win four more Grammys. 1968. The year became forever known for the suppression of Czechoslovakian descent. Soviet tanks crushed the fragile flowers of what was called the Prague Spring. The Soviet army walked in. And Ringo Starr walked out on the Beatles for 12 days. Nonetheless, the Beatles' White Album came out the same year, one of their greatest and most influential works, mirroring the confusion of the times. 1969. Sharp clashes between the Soviets and the Chinese break out along China's northern border, a confrontation that almost results in a nuclear exchange. The tension within the Beatles also heated up in 69. While filming the movie Let It Be, George Harrison walked out for a week. Next came the immortal Abbey Road, John and Yoko's wartime plea, and then the fateful news that John Lennon was leaving the Beatles. When I find myself 1970, the Soviet government intensifies its systematic crackdown on dissent and its dissident movement. The same year, Alexander Solzhenitsyn, the voice of Soviet dissent, receives the Nobel Prize for Literature. And the Beatles also achieved great success, with The Long and Winding Road selling 1.2 million copies in two days. But all good things must come to an end. Paul McCartney publicly announced he was leaving due to personal, business, and musical differences. The Beatles, as a group, were done. Let It Be, one of the band's most profound songs, is released, signifying the band's breakup. While the Soviet Union was still two decades away from collapsing, the legacy of the Beatles continues. 
And nearly four decades after Paul had written back in the USSR, he would finally sing the song in Russia. A very different Russia than it was during the heyday of the Beatles. Back in the USSR. Back in the USSR. Back in the USSR.